Odiogo.com, the web read for you. Massive radioactive wave from Japan across the U.S. West Coast. Over the last year the threat of radiation hitting the United States from the Fukushima nuclear disaster has gone from a conspiracy theory, to a possibility, to a flat-out fact. Now, scientists with the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute have confirmed that a wave of highly radioactive waste is headed directly for the U.S. West Coast. In a segment on The Big Picture with Tom Hartman, Kevin Camps, of the group Beyond Nuclear, joined the show to discuss the dangers of radiation in Japan the United States, and the world. Last year, at the behest of the United States, TPCO intentionally released 3 million gallons of radioactive waste into the Pacific Ocean and now the world is set to experience the consequences of this disastrous decision. Here in the United States, the EPA and other corrupt federal agencies are literally ignoring the danger posed by the radioactive waste. In fact, during the first few months of the multiple Fukushima meltdowns, the NRC intentionally mislead the public by covering up the dangers posed by radiation released from Japan. Sadly, corporate interests and nuclear apologists in Japan and the United States continue to push for more nuclear power plants while ignoring the dangers to the entire world. In Florida, Progress Energy is pushing forward with a plan to build two new nuclear power plants at a time when the public is largely against this dangerous, possible civilization-ending technology. Progress Energy, like a giant stone juggernaut, is trying to steamroll over Florida residents by building two new nuclear power plants in Levy County despite the recent Fukushima disaster, warnings from environmentalists that the strain on the aquifer and the environment will be too great, and local residents who are just saying no, wrote Tony Muga. What leaves many Floridians scratching their heads is the fact that after the Three Mile Island meltdown, the Simi Valley meltdown, the Chernobyl meltdown, the ongoing Fukushima meltdown, the effluence radioactive discharge that ALL plants are allowed, the countless tritium leaks at plants across the nation, anyone would even consider building another nuclear plant ever again. The people of the world must stand up in mass and demand the immediate suspension of any new nuclear power plants as well as full-scale independent tests of all operational nuclear plants worldwide. Source-related posts Moving on to the continuing nuclear crisis in Japan, a radioactive wave is headed toward the United States. Scientists with the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution are tracking debris from last year's Japanese earthquake and tsunami as it makes its way across the Pacific Ocean. That debris, which carries with it extremely high levels of radiation, is currently 186 miles off the coast of Japan and could start lashing the coast of the United States within the year, depending on the currents. Scientists are immediately concerned about marine life being hit with radiation levels millions of times above normal. But by next year, it'll be in our marine food supply, our rain, and our coastal waters. So more than a year after the Fukushima nuclear crisis began, the world is still suffering its effects, with more to come. But despite all that, the Japanese government is reportedly preparing to restart one of its nuclear reactors. This week, the Japanese Prime Minister will meet with cabinet officials to discuss turning on a nuclear reactor in western Japan that's been sh shut down since the Fukushima crisis began more than a year ago. So why hasn't the world learned the lessons of nuclear power yet, even as radioactive waste is headed toward the U.S. West Coast? Kevin Camps joins me now. He's the radioactive waste watchdog at beyondnuclear.org. Kevin, welcome back. Thank you, Tom. So what is going on here? With, with the Japanese saying, I, I thought, last time we talked, in fact, I, th I thought that the consensus in Japan was no nukes. Well, there's, there's strong citizen pressure to keep now 53 of 54 reactors in Japan shut down. There's only one operating commercial reactor in Japan. It's going to shut down in early May. Japan will be a nuclear free zone, and it's because of the anti-nuclear movement of Japan, the common citizens of Japan who, because of Fukushima Daiichi, don't want those risks in their lives anymore. And what the government and the industry are worried about is if they enter the summer with no reactors online and people's lights are still on, the electricity supply is stable, the air conditioners are working, people are going to start to ask, why do we have these risks in our midst? So the federal government, as you said, is sending their Minister of Economy, Trade and Industry to Fukui Prefecture in Western Japan to try to convince the governor there 
who you wants guys need a nuke. safety Running. upgrades in place before yeah. the restart. That's yeah. kind of a reasonable request sure. uh, to just get out of the way. And the feds are hinting they may just override him at this point. Whoa. Um, can these reactors be made safe? No, I mean, if you lose electricity from the grid, if you lose the emergency diesels, as happened at Fukushima Daiichi, be it an earthquake, be it an earthquake and tsunami, uh, be it some other natural disaster, Japan just in recent days was hit by another major storm. So there are many ways you can lose electricity to the safety systems, to the cooling systems. Right. And of course, you've got- It could be um, a tornado in the Midwest. Uh, <laughs> floods in Nebraska last yeah. summer, which were much more serious than they ever let on at the time. Yeah. Um, this wave of radioactive waste, or what has become now this, I don't know the word, beachhead or whatever, this, this just plume, I guess is a pretty good word, um, that is coming off Japan and heading towards us. What is it? What does it mean? Well, uh, almost to the day a year ago, uh, Tokyo Electric intentionally released 11,500 tons or 3 million gallons of radioactive water into the ocean on purpose. The federal government of Japan gave them permission. There's recent news media reports that it was under pressure from the United States government. And the excuse Wait at the minute. time, Why? the excuse at the time was that Tokyo Electric was out of storage space for radioactive water at the plant. And they had a lot more coming. They were trying to keep the reactors as cool as possible because of the meltdowns. They were clearing away less contaminated water to make room for much more contaminated water to come. That's the, that the, the decision they made. And that plume, as you said, it's taken a year, but it's now reached Hawaii. Another year from now, it'll probably reach the west coast of the United States. And yes, those are our fishing waters, but the fish happen to move around. There are species of tuna that spend part of their life cycle on the Japanese northeast coast, and they have migrated to the United States already. Hmm. So where is the food monitoring program? There is no post-Fukushima food monitoring program in place. It was quickly dismantled. We're back to pre-Fukushima radiation monitoring, which could miss a lot. Get to Amazon.com right now and buy a Geiger counter. Is that, the, is that our food monitoring Japan, program? You're on your own, Charlie? In Japan, um, I just met a woman in uh, New York City who's now an anti-nuclear activist. And her sisters, her nieces and nephews, are monitoring their own food, monitoring the food at the elementary school, and bringing in Fukushima refugees. Amazing. So the people of Japan have been thrown onto their own resources to protect themselves. And the people of the United States, apparently? Very much so. Uh, we see that up and down the West Coast, people getting radiation monitors, even to the point of checking their own food supply. Yeah, yeah. I actually bought, you know, I, in fact, I brought it in one of the times you were here on the show. Um, you visited the Fukushima plant back in 2010. We just have 20, 30 seconds left. Thoughts on that? Well, it's a dead zone where I went to, and the wonderful people I met are scattered to the wind across Japan and other mm -hmm. countries. I also visited Fukui. I went to a 1,200-year-old uh, Buddhist uh, temple, and uh, they have been a strong leader in the resistance to those reactors that now are slated for restart. That's great. Kevin, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Thank you. It's always great to see you, um, e even though it's rough news. I appreciate it. It's time for a worldwide ban on the most expensive and the most dangerous form of electricity generation on Earth, nuclear power. No nukes.